Hello. Um, okay, so a topic I want to talk about that is a um, topic amongst music fans, but also mainly the Red Hot Chili Peppers fans, um, is the the Josh Klinghoffer and the John Frusciante thing. Um, so if you're a fan of music, then you know you probably only know about John uh, John Frusciante and Josh Klinghoffer. Um, but if you're a hardcore fan of the, the Peppers, then you probably are someone who is amongst the argument of um, those two and then added on Dave Navarro and Hillel Slovak for the band. Um, and that's because there's a lot of people that they, you know, yes, they're fans of the Chili Peppers, but there's a lot of people that only really... Um, Think, they think that they started with Blood Sugar Sex Magic, and that's because that was their breakout album. But they had four albums prior in the 1980s, and um, that was the albums with Hello Slovak. And then a lot of people, um, you know, they don't overlook One Hot Minute, but it's it's kind of overshadowed by Blood Sugar Sex Magic and Californication. So with John Frusciante and Josh Klinghoffer specifically, um, a lot of people are still to this day saying, bring back John Frusciante, John, please come back, blah, blah, blah. So the thing that needs to be understood here is that one, um, John Frusciante was a part of the process of picking Josh Klinghoffer. And they are all really good friends. So when when the first departure of John Frusciante happened, um, it was on bad terms. And that's a thing that needs to be understood for this topic. It was on bad terms and it wasn't it wasn't a good time for the band as a creative whole. And then along those ways, they got Dave Navarro. Um, and then, you know, that's what caused One Hot Minute to sound the way it did, because it was kind of, you know, One Hot Minute is very different. One Hot Minute is, me for me personally, One Hot Minute is one of my favorite albums. But One Hot Minute is very different, and I, I can see people's argument on that. Um, but where now I'm with you, when I'm with you started, Josh Klinghoffer had not been in like a huge band yet. Um, he had been a part of Bicycle Thief. He had done some stuff with John Frusciante in the past. Yes, they've worked together. And... So it was it was a new thing for him being in that stage life of being amongst all of these people. Um, so it kind of it, it took him a minute to get used to that. For one, I saw him in 2012. And and I will say that Josh Klinghoffer was a little bit like kind of kind of quiet. Um, and. Then I saw them again in 2013 at Firefly Music Festival, and it seemed like the rest of the band was really aiming for getting, you know, the approval of Josh Klinghoffer amongst the fan base. And I think that that's super important to keep in mind. Um, so when you look at the two different styles, of John Frusciante and Josh Klinghoffer. So John Frusciante has had a solo career along with the Chili Peppers where he has done several different types of guitar playing. Um, he has an album where he does all acoustic. He has a, an album where he does more, you know, of the hardcore playing of guitar and then he has several albums where he does electronic and that's what he is presently doing so whereas josh 
um, he is with Dot Hacker, and he does quite different guitar playing than that of John Frusciante, but their their guitar playing can mash up very well because they have one had a band together um, called Ataxia, and then and then they have done a, a John Frusciante project to get together. So there was a lot of mashups with them, and. Um, even in Stadium Arcadium, you know, the days of Stadium Arcadium touring, when they needed to play songs with multiple guitars, Josh is the one who stepped up and was that second guitarist. So he had some influence with the band already, and he had connections with the band. And there's even an interview where Josh Klinghoffer is talking with Anthony Kiedis and, and I believe Flea um, back in the Californication days. So he has known them for a long time and he's had a bond with them. So it was clearly the greatest option for the band to do that, I, I believe. And they, they have a way better connection than like times that were with John Frusciante. And I understand that on a creative aspect, people want John back, but you need to like be able to kind of have an open mind and see the different guitar playing that Josh Klinghoffer is bringing to the table. If you listen to The Getaway, for example, um, uh, you listen to Dreams of a Samurai, that's, that's a very dark uh, melodic song that, that's very different than anything the Chili Peppers have done. So it's, it's a different approach to their sound and it's a different um, style than what they've done. So I get being on that, on that thing where nothing is ever gonna be as blood sugar sex magic to some people, but me personally, I wouldn't even, I don't know if I'd put Blood Sugar in my top three as a fan of the band. Um, it was good, but I do know that in an emotional level, uh, the band wasn't at its greatest that it could have been. Now, when it comes to John Frusciante, Flea, Chad Smith, and Anthony Kiedis, then Stadium Arcadium would be that. They were the most connected at that point. Um, but for the getaway, you know, the band was very, very connected at that point as well, where Josh Klinghoffer is even playing bass on certain stuff, like he plays bass on The Hunter. And, um, you know, I, I understand the wanting of, of John Frusciante back. If that's the guitarist that you like, that's the guitarist that you like. And some people aren't open to change. But what I, I want to express in this video is give it a shot. Really listen, take I'm with you, take I'm beside you and take the getaway and really, really listen with not how much greater could this be with John Frusciante and the band in mind, but with how great can this be with Josh Klinghoffer bringing what he is bringing to the table in mind? Um, so if, if anybody ever watches this, I, I, that's what I recommend to you. Just, just take a listen to the getaway, take a listen to I'm with you and take a listen to I'm beside you and have that in mind because yes, he is bringing different things to the table, but what he is bringing is good and his spirits are good. John Frusciante is in a place where he just wants to focus on electronic music now. Yes, he is doing stuff with guitar. Um, I saw recently that he's gonna be doing a project where he is gonna be doing some guitar playing, so I'm very anxious to hear about that. Um, but John Frusciante, it was his choice to leave, and he left on good terms this time, so let's, let's all be thankful for that. And he wants to do his electronic thing now. I personally, have been really diving into John Frusciante's electronic stuff. And I, me as somebody who is into electronic music at this moment in my life is really enjoying that for what it is. So I'm thankful that he's going that route because 
one of these days people are going to look back and they're going to see his guitar playing albums and that's going to be amazing and then they're also going to see these this electronic side to him and i think that's amazing too it's all about creative spark and that's what that is what john frusciante wants to go for right now in his life um, he doesn't want that fame and all that and that's fine and Josh Klinghoffer, when he joined the band, he even had to think about it before he joined the band. He didn't just join right away. He said, let me think about this and I'll get back to you. So that's very important too. So um, yeah, uh, this this video is just gonna be titled Josh Klinghoffer and John Frusciante. I, I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. Um, I know there was a lot of scatter, scattered uh, things there, but it's it's all the same of what I'm trying to um, speak about. So I hope that somebody can take away something from this video, even if it's giving Josh Klinghoffer the shot that he very much deserves. So thank you for watching.